Hey everybody, Cad Roll Hunter here. We got a box of nickels. We got our album here. We're gonna see if we can find anything that we need to fill some slots in the album. It is a good old fashioned nickel hunt. Hello everyone, this is James and you're watching my channel, Cad Roll Hunter. That's right, we have 50 rolls of customer wrap nickels. We've got our album here, our Lighthouse Vista. If you have watched our last episode, incredibly, we filled this 1929 slot with a King George V, the first I have ever found. But our album needs a lot of help. Of course, there are a whole bunch of other King George V slots. It's not as likely that we're going to fill any of those today. And we have a bunch of King George VI slots, starting with the 1937s, that we need filled. A lot in the 30s and the 40s and still into the 50s. So there's lots of stuff that we could possibly find. We also don't have a 1970 yet, so that might be in here. Well, we got our nickel cup out and ready to go. And all we need to do is start looking in these rolls to see what we can find. I'll also just mention that I picked up these nickels in a nearby city that I've never gotten coins from before at three different banks to get 50 rolls. I was out of town. I felt this was a good chance for me to see what was out there. So I have no idea. You just never know when you go to a bank if you're going to get totally uh, circulated random coins or if there's another coin roll hunter in the area who is using that as their dump bank. Hopefully not, but we're spread over a few banks. So Really hoping that we're going to find something good here. We'll know soon enough. Roll number one, just the third coin. It didn't take us very long to get our first uh, foreign find for the board. It's just a US 1984. Nothing crazy special about that. But it is a foreign coin and not a bad looking one at that. Uh, so our first find of the day. Roll number three and we're going to have our first older Canadian find. It's an Elizabeth Laureate portrait. We'll flip it over. It is a 1964, and it doesn't have the water line, the extra water line that you would be able to see there. So we're always looking for that, but that's our first older Canadian for the board. We're in roll number five, and we are going to have something interesting here. This is going to be a 1940s King George VI. We know it's 40s because it says et ind imp in the legend, and it's been holed. I've never seen one like that, but somebody's put a hole through it. We'll flip it over. And it's a 1941, and I'm not sure if we need this for the album. We probably do. Um, we're going to want to find one that doesn't have a big hole in it, but that might be at least a space filler for now. But that is a King George VI nickel in the box and one for the board. Same roll, we got a 1965, and that means we can look for the very rare large bead variety. We'll put it under the scope. And what we're particularly looking for is if there is a bead right in the center of the uh, the two eyes here, the Elizabeth II. This is the small bead variety. Basically, there's a gap in the bead between the two eyes here. So that's not the really rare one. We're going to keep our eyes open for that one, but that's something we want to look for too. Roll number six, and we're finding a fair number of nickel, older nickel composition nickels. This one here is just a 1977, the low seven. So you can see that the right seven is lower than the left seven. It's just going into the nickel jar, but that's always a good sign. It means we've got some older stuff in here and I can see some Americans uh, at the back. So I think we're going to have a fun hunt. Who knows what else might be in these rolls? Same roll. We have another 1964 and we'll just take a closer look again and just see what we're looking for for that extra water line. So there are the water lines at uh, the front of the beaver here. And what we're looking for, of course, is the die crack that goes across from the log and the designer's initials to the rim that looks like an extra water line. And I haven't found one yet, but we're going to keep on looking. Roll number 15, and we're going to have us another find here because there is a 12-sided edge. I didn't even notice it when I put them down. But this one is a 1960. Roll 17 brings us a, another 1964. This one is our third of the box. Same roll, and we have just found something pretty awesome. Got this 1999. You can see this is in great shape, and I flipped it over, and it has the P composition mark. 
This was issued only for testing. It was not a circulation coin. I've never found one of these before. This is the first time. This is pretty awesome. Um, in an MS-65, this would be uh, a 15 or so dollar coin. If it was as much as an MS-67, it would be $90. I don't think that's what we've got here. You can see there's uh, some circulation marks. It's probably more like an AU. But this is a 1999 P, only issued for testing. I don't even know what the mintage is on these. Um, I'm going to have to find that out because this is, it's not listed in the Charlton Guide. And uh, this is incredibly uh, low mintage, I believe. And again, not intended for circulation. This is an awesome find. Roll number 18, we've got a good looking 1981. This is a possible upgrader. It's got some scratches, but I think it might be better than what we've got in the album. Circulated for sure, but we'll have a peek later. Roll number 22, we got our first 1990 of the hunt. So we're going to Throw that up and see if we have the bare belly, which we do not at all. We would see some dye deterioration or over polishing resulting in this fur not being very well defined at all or completely gone. Not the case. Roll number 27 and we found another 1999 P. Okay, a little bit different. This one's a US, a 1999 P. Not quite the same as that Canadian 1999 P that we found, but it's another US nickel for the board. Okay, I just uh, pulled roll number 28 out and put it in my hand and look at what I see. There are a whole bunch of 12 sided edges and then one here that looks like it might be something old. It could be a rusty chrome plated. This roll in particular is going to be really interesting. So I'm gonna put this down and we're going to go through it and see what is in here. This could be exciting. Okay, well, a 2010 Ender isn't very exciting. And we've got some newer stuff here. But look at what we've got now. So that is a 1960 Laureate Portrait. And then we're going to have a bunch of finds. A 1961. A 62. Another 62. And then a 98, a 99, that's probably just going to be a regular 1999. But there's a bunch in here, a 60. So far, no King George yet. 61. Oh, there's a 71 for the nickel cup. Another 1960. That one looks really nice, actually. Much better than average. That could be an upgrader. We'll just go through these really quickly to see what we've got. Oh my goodness, look at that. 1939, and we've got some Georgies here. That is a King George VI, a 1939 nickel. And then we've got some other older stuff here. 47 Maple Leaf, that was minted in 48. A 50. A 57, Queen Elizabeth. We just found an awesome roll. Another 1960. We may as well keep looking here and see if there's any others. 1959. And this was absolutely a steel nickel in 1952. I think we've already found this one, probably in a bit better shape. But I don't often find steel uh, chromium plated nickels. Another 61, 61, 99, let's check that too. And then a 1962, again, this one looks to be, well, it's got some scratches, unfortunately. And then that's it for that roll, but that was awesome. A 1939, a bunch of Georges and some older ones. I'm going to just sort of go through these again and kind of give a little bit of a roll wrap up here. Okay, that was absolutely crazy. In that one roll, we're going to have a whole bunch of book fillers because we have a whole lot of spaces. But we got that 39, a 47 Maple Leaf. We got a 50, a 52, a 57. One of the things we want to look for on the 57 
is the bug tail variety. And basically it's like a die chip on the tail of the beaver that look, made it look like a, I don't know, like a bug was on it or something weird. It doesn't look like we've got that here. It would be basically pointing down more from the end of the tail. So that's one thing we want to look for. And um, we've got a 59. We've got a whole stack of 60s. We've got four 60s and we've got four 61s and three 62s. And there's also a double date variety, dye deterioration on the date in the 62s. We didn't find them here. I scoped them just a second ago. So I'm hoping that we've got more rolls just like this in here. Uh, who knows? I can see a couple of wrappers that are very similar, um, but we won't know until we actually get in there. That was incredible. Very next roll. I don't see any 12-sided edges, but I do see a reeded edge of a dime there. So we're doing really well. It's a little bit of a different treasure this time. Okay, I pulled it out and it's just a common 1992, so nothing terribly special. We didn't find silver in our, our nickel roll, unfortunately, um, but that's an interesting find. We're up five cents, same roll, and we have got yet another book filler because we've got the low mintage 1970 that we didn't have in there yet. It doesn't look like it's in great shape and I might be able to get some of this gunk off. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but um, this is only minted at about 5.7 million. So that's low mintage and consider that many other Canadian nickels might be minted at 20 something to over 100 million. This is pretty low. This is a key date nickel. Roll number 30 and we've got our oldest American nickel of the bunch. It's a 1964. This one is out of Denver. We can see the D mint mark to the right of Monticello. This is our 11th US nickel of the hunt. Well, I'm halfway through what is actually roll number 30 because it had fallen down in the box and I couldn't see it, but we've got another laureate portrait. We can see by the smooth edge, it's either going to be a 63 or a 64. Uh, those are the only two laureate portrait, year, portrait years that weren't 12 sided. If this is a 63, it'll be our first one of the hunt. If it's a 64, it'll be our fourth 64. And it is our first 63. Roll number 33, and we're going to have a couple of fines because I just pulled up this 1990. Well, it may or may not be a fine, but right behind it is a 1963. So that's a great fine. But what we'll do is we're going to scope this 1990 and see if we've got the bare belly. And so we're looking at it. And I wouldn't say that this is necessarily the bare belly, but what you can see is right here is just the earliest, earliest phase potentially of that over polished dye that would have created the bare belly version uh, over time more and more of this would have been exposed but you can actually sort of see some like horizontal sort of striations there which is really common on the bare belly so i wouldn't say this is a bare belly there's a lot of fur there but this might be just the earliest stage of what would provide or present the bare belly Roll 39, we've got a nice 1978. You can see it doesn't have a lot of circulation wear at all. It's hard to remember exactly which of our 70s and 80s might need to be upgraded because in our last couple boxes, we found some really nice ones, but we'll set it aside just in case this might upgrade what we've got in the book. We're in roll number 45 and that box has cooled down considerably. We haven't had another roll like that big one we just had. But I bring you in because we're going to have another dime, it looks. So uh, that means we're up 10 cents for the box. That's our second dime. And that dime is just going to be a common 2,000 Canadian dime in pretty circulated condition. Roll number 47, and we're not done yet. Laid these out a few, well, a little more than a few coins in. And we've got ourselves another Laureate portrait. And this one is another 1959. All right, well, that hunt is done. We went through 2,000 nickels, and we found lots of really good stuff. So I'll just do a little bit of a wrap-up here. First of all, I guess we did really good in the nickel cup. It is half full, and if you consider all of our finds here being mostly nickel, we were probably three-quarters of a cup. That's really, really good. We got 19 U.S. nickels. We got two Canadian dimes, so we're ahead of the game already. I set aside a handful here in the 70s and 80s that could possibly upgrade. We'll take a look in the album. But we did really good with our other finds. We actually had 17 Laureate portraits in the 60s. You can see we got four 1960s, 
sorry, five 1960s, four 1961s, a few 62s, a couple 63s, and three 1964s. We also found three Laureate portraits in the 50s, including a 57, not the bug tail, and a couple 59s. And we got some King George VI. We got a 50 and a 52. That's the chrome-plated steel. We got a couple in the 40s, that 41 with the hole, and that 47 maple leaf, which was minted in 1948. And our finds, of course, were this 1939, so a 30s King George VI nickel, and this 1999 test token with the P composition mark was not intended for general circulation. I tried to find some mintage numbers on these. These were actually um, given to the vending machine industry who wanted to be able to test real coins in their machines because they were changing the composition to nickel-plated steel. So after, and, and I couldn't find any numbers about how many of those were actually issued. Afterwards, though, the mint saw there were uh, people were interested in these and some of them kind of leaked out and they ended up putting out 20,000 sets of these P composition mark test tokens or test coins. So this could very well have come from one of those 20,000 sets, which would be incredibly low mintage or from those test tokens that were put out to the vending machine industry. We just don't know. And uh, but either way, it's a really great find. And I almost missed it. We got that low mintage 1970 that we didn't already have. So we're going to look through the album. We're going to find out how many spots we can fill. And I have a sense that we're going to fill several because we got some stuff we haven't seen yet. So let's take a look and find out how we do. Well, we had a very productive hunt today. We were actually able to add seven coins to this album. And we've been kind of stagnating up until, of course, our last hunt where we added that 1929. But we added that 39, that 41, which we'll probably be able to find an upgrader there with that hole in it. We also added the 47 and the 50. And then on the next page, we added the 57 and we added the low mintage 1970. So that was a great bit of work on the album. In addition, we were able to upgrade a bunch of these coins that we had in here earlier. We upgraded the 59, the 60, and the 62, as well as a 78. So we had four upgraders. So seven new spots filled and four upgraders. Plus, oh, I've got to say we had eight because we also had that 1999p test token so that is fantastic we now actually have 78 of 115 sorry 117 spots in this beautiful lighthouse vista album filled plus we've got four other coins there were three variations that didn't actually have a slot plus our 1990 bear belly so we are doing really well. We've got 82 coins in the book, but 78 of 117 marked spots. So that was fantastic. If you've enjoyed this hunt, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, Cad Rule Hunter, if you haven't yet done so. I'd really appreciate that. And hit that notification icon so that you can see when my new videos are coming out. I have videos coming out all the time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.